If we think about um, extra date management under compression, extra date is considered one of the, the barriers to healing. And many of the things that appear on the, the slide here, we know plenty about. But one of the things that concerns me as a, an active clinician is the effect on patients and what are the things that bother patients. And we, we've heard a lot about um, some of the microbiological issues, but one of the biggest issues that bothers patients more than anything else is exudate management. It's one of the things that I hear time and again with patients when they come to clinic. And certainly my talk today will focus more on some of those more practical aspects about how do we deal with some of these problems and what do we have available to us to, to help with some of these things. If we think about what is wound exudate, Steve Thomas describes it, I think, particularly well as a gen generic term just given to the liquid that's produced from a chronic or an acute wound or fistula once hemostasis has been achieved. So it's something that's going to be there all of the time and it's something that we have to constantly think about in all of the care that we give to our patients. Exudate production, where does it come from? Well, it comes from the vascular system and it's something that we actually need to um, think about wounds. We get the extravasation of serous fluid and it brings with it histamine, TNF, other growth factors, bacterial toxins. So it's full of positive and negative aspects and they can present us with some fairly difficult management problems if we don't get them right. And certainly some of those have already been looked at. So what are its functions? It's a transport medium from the blood system. It brings all of the things that we need to drive the wound healing process forward. And it also brings all of the nutrients and oxygen that we need to help um, move things forward. It provides the moist wound environment that we know we need to drive healing. And it transports fibrin from the scab for scab formation initially. And there's this idea that it acts as a wound cleanser. The movement of exudate through a wound, I think, is something that is actually really important. Um, certainly there are theories that propose that one of the reasons that TMP works so well is that we actively move wound exudate all of the time. And we don't produce um, chronic wound fluid within the vascular system the point of chronicity must occur within the wound bed itself. So moving exudate or drawing exudate, I think is one of the things that perhaps will need further exploration. What's the impact of excessive exudate on patients? We now have a wealth of quality of life literature going back over 40 years that looks at some of these impacts and it's a constantly reoccurring theme in all of these things. Soggy, wet, heavy dressings, have got to impact on somebody's quality of life. It cannot be pleasant. It brings with it discomfort. It may be accompanied by infection, so it can therefore be painful. Odour is always associated with poor exudate management, I think, in my clinical experience. It causes embarrassment and can lead to social isolation and difficulty in other social situations. It will prolong healing times and increased patient anxiety and all of those things will impact on patients as well. There's increased dressing changes, increased nursing time, which is something we're all being challenged with today, certainly in the UK. And as we have a global financial crisis, I'm sure that's something that faces many of the other delegates that are here today. And it impacts upon relationships. We always need to keep in mind what the patient wants. Theirs is a fear of leakage. This is the way that they describe their problems with wound fluid. We call it exudate. For them it's leakage and it has an impact on them in lots and lots of different ways. People use words like, I feel unclean, I smell, I'm embarrassed. And there's the pain due to infection or excoriation and maceration. And these again lead to social isolation. And perhaps one of the things that leg ulcer clinics and certainly the leg ulcer leg club model um, promote is this reduction of social isolation and that perhaps explains some of their success in a way. Exudate, there are two main factors which contribute to the skin damage. There's the moisture or the water content itself, but I think perhaps more important is the content of the moisture. 
the enzymes, the plasma, the proteins, the bacteria and everything else that's within that fluid itself. And so that presents again management problems. Excess exudate, maceration has been described, the white areas that we have surrounding the wound are just the epidermal skin cells full of moisture. And I think for a lot of these cases, they can be quite easily managed by getting better exudate control, maybe an increase in dressing change or looking at more absorbent dressings. And they don't present us too many significant problems unless they're leaking. And again, problems like this around the wound margin can be solved by reducing or dealing with the amount of overhydration. But a greater problem is the eczema that the previous speaker described or the excoriation because I think that tells us that we're reaching the point where the fluid content or the, the content of the fluid has changed in some way and is presenting us with significantly more problems. And we know from several pieces of work now and several studies that the role or the activities of MMPs within wound fluid and its impact on the surrounding skin can be very, very significant. So holding exudate or managing it and keeping it away from the surrounding skin is something that is a clinical challenge to us. The clinical challenge of managing wounds under compression is also a significant one. Certainly in the clinic that I work in, we tend to use inelastic or short stretch systems rather than multi-layer bandages. So the absorption of some of the exudate into the layers of bandage that come with multi-layer systems is perhaps something that's not there with the inelastic systems. So we need to think about having dressings in some way that give us the ability to manage exudate and reduce patient problems even under compression because compression is the cornerstone of treatment for patients with lower limb venous disease. What we need to think about in managing these things is that we need to reduce the amount of exudate where possible and lots of these things have nothing to do with dressings. We need to think about elevating legs, getting the right levels of compression therapy or the best levels of compression therapy that patients can um, tolerate. Removal of necrotic tissue and reducing bio burden are important factors too because they all have a role within exudate control and certainly if we're looking at dealing with these things we're then still left with the problem that exudate is going to be there and how we manage it for patients is really going to be um, important. We need to plan care well for patients with wet wounds. All the speakers today have talked about assessing the patient and the wound, look at the patient before you look at the wound. We need to set individualised goals or objectives what bothers the patient most? What's the thing that, deal, that bothers them the most? If we deal with that first, we are much more likely to be successful in our treatment objectives than if we go with our own objectives about how we would like to heal the wound. Not all patients will accept the therapies that we offer and we have to be adaptable within how we offer our treatment. We need to address the root causes of problems we need to take small steps. We need to think about the patient being on a journey with their chronic wound and we need to move through that journey carefully. But we also need to accept that because a wound may be chronic or long term, that we're going to have setbacks and how we manage those setbacks can be important in how we ultimately reach the goals that we need or want for them. And it's about managing the symptoms and not thinking about healing as our first objective. How do dressings manage exudate? There are lots and lots of ways that exudate is managed by dressings. Simple absorption, absorption and gelling, absorption and evaporation of fluid via moisture, vapour transfer, but also speed and magnitude of action. Is there selective absorption and the maintenance of an optimum environment are all key in how those things are maintained and we don't necessarily have the answers individually and exudate production in all patients will individually be very different. So care should be individualised and certainly ideas, I work in community settings about dressings are changed on a Tuesday and Friday in community settings in the UK because that's the pattern we have for delivering our care. I've met no dressing yet that knows that it's got to go four days this time rather than three days last time. We may have intelligent dressings but they're not yet that intelligent. 
Dressings and exudate management, it's generally assumed that all dressings take up fluid evenly. However, some preferentially absorb water. And if we're preferentially absorbing the water element of exudate, we are going to increase some of the negative elements that we may leave behind on a wound. And so taking exudate in evenly and not changing the concentrations of exudate at the wound interface are also things that are important. We need to think about selecting appropriate dressings. We need to think about what do we need them to absorb, how do we want them to transmit things, and how are we going to maintain our hydroregulation or balance at the wound itself. And these are particular challenges with lots of dressings under compression bandaging. But the challenge remains, and it's one that we need to try and solve for our patients. Our choice was to look at using QTMED Siltec underneath compression and the thing that attracted us most of all in the clinic was the superabsorbance within the dressing itself. The fact that the silicon layer would allow or not impede transmission of exudate and when it comes into the dressing it's going to be held and locked in place. And we also understand or have to understand that the moisture vapour transfer rates in dressings will be affected if we put bandages on top of them. So the fact that the exudate can be locked in and contained was something we felt that was important. Um, I've mentioned the superabsorbance and their benefits, but the fluid retention was one that we thought would be good. And certainly, if we look at Siltec, the fact that it takes exudate into the wound, in the pattern of the wound, shows us that it's not going to be placed on those vulnerable um, wound margins and present us with some problems. So if we look at some case studies um, where we've used QDMED Siltec under compression bandaging on patients. First one is an 83-year-old gentleman presented with type 2 diabetes and venous leg ulcer, which he'd had and been treated in community settings for five years. He had a DLQI, and it's, this is something, the Dermatology Life Quality Index is something we use routinely in clinic for all of our patients. It's freely available to download on the internet and comes with instructions. And it's a series of 15 questions that look at the impact on somebody's quality of life of their long-term skin condition. It's primarily be used in eczema and psoriasis management, but I personally feel it's just as applicable in wound management because we are talking about a long-term skin condition. When all of the questions are answered, you total up the score. Any score of more than 10 implies that condition that you're looking at has a significant impact upon the patient's quality of life and the way that we use the tool is that we use it on first assessment to examine quality of life and then we reassess after we've implemented a treatment plan to look at are we making an impact on the quality of life and it's one of the outcome measures that we can sell to our commissioners to show that even if we can't heal a wound that's been there for five years in 16 weeks we can still make an impact on a patient's quality of life and therefore show some kind of improvement. There had been poor exudate management cited as the major impact in the quality of life assessment. Certainly when we get a high score, we ask them what is the issue that bothers them most with their treatment. Two weeks into treatment, as we can see now, the exudate is much, much better controlled. The wound has been debrided well. We did use a different method to debride rather than just the dressing itself. Controlled, no leakage is now being reported by the patient. The wound bed looks significantly improved. And the DLQI has now improved to eight. We've made a significant impact on the patient's quality of life in only two weeks of treatment. Six weeks of treatment, DLQI is now three. The patient is significantly more happy in the way things are going. There's really good evidence of contraction at the wound margin. The exudate is significantly reduced and is really well contained in primary dressing. Case study two, 72-year-old man, again, type 2 diabetes, which is well controlled. He is, however, a smoker, a mixed etiology of three years duration ulcer. Patient had had no compression um, for a long time. DLQI of 14. Leakage and odour are cited as the major quality of life impact issues for the patient. After four weeks of treatment, we're using QTML to under compression bandaging. Exudate is now controlled. The surrounding skin condition is significantly improved. And the DLQI has moved down to six. 
So again, Exudate being the major issue, we're moving forward with the patient. 12 weeks of treatment, DLQI now down to four, significant reduction in wound size. Exudate remains controlled and is now reducing, and a reducing level of Exudate is a really good clear clinical indicator that healing is going well. At 16 weeks, we continue to progress. I saw the patient yesterday in clinic, and they're now very nearly healed. Case study three, 67-year-old female, with a body mass index of 48, gross edema, ulcer for two years, community nurses had not dopplered this patient, poorly controlled exudate, the bandages effectively were just being used for mopping up, and a DLQI of 20. This is a lady where exudate dominated or ruled her life. Four weeks of treatment, the limb volume has reduced by 20%. Cutimed Siltec and compression bandaging were in place as primary treatment. We have a 50% reduction in wound size and a DLQI is now six. And no exudate management problems were reported by the patient. Seven weeks of treatment, we're showing continued improvement and this lady's improvement continues today. The last case study is 75 year old female with a 20 year history of ulceration, almost circumferential, mixed etiology ulcer. No compression had been used. She reported her pain as eight on a visual analog scale, DLQ of 19, and leakage was reported as a daily issue for this patient. The ABPI was 0.79, the patient was depressed and lacking significant motivation. Believes will go to her grave with an ulcer as it's been such a significant problem. And four weeks of treatment in full compression, twice weekly with Qtimed sorbact because we were having some infection management issues under Qtimed Siltec. Exudate is now controlled and surrounding skin is much improved. DLQI is reduced to 11, which still shows a significant impact, but a better one. But pain is reduced to four on a visual analogue scale, and we have no odour. Twelve weeks of treatment, DLQI is now reduced to seven. Believes that the wound may now heal. The wound bed shows good signs of healing, and progress continues for this lady. Exudate is significantly reduced. Pain is now three on a visual analogue scale, and we're moving along very, very nicely with a patient who is now motivated and believes that things can be changed. So in summary and conclusion, exudate in wounds management can be beneficial, but it also can be a barrier to healing if it's poorly managed. We need to look at appropriate dressing selection, and it should be based on the qualities of absorption, transmission, and hydroregulation. Patient quality of life would be maximised if we managed to get all three, um, and it's provided by vertical absorption and fluid handling. The case studies have demonstrated that the unique um, inclusion of a superabsorbent in the QT med dressing, QT med siltate dressing, has had an impact upon these patients' quality of life and has helped to manage exudate in a significant way. Thank you. Thanks, thank you.